Okay, good morning. Um, my name is Suzanne Jay. I'm um, going to take my four minutes to talk about a uh, to talk about a couple strategies that um, I put into place uh, for building greater sustainability for a student-run journal. So I'm a I'm a um, over the last year I served as the managing editor for a student-initiated and run open access journal using OJS, um, publishing the scholarly work of students at the UBC high school. Um, when I decided to use this slide, I thought it might have my name and email address on it, so I would get away with not creating a title slide, but it actually just has the uh, email address for the, for the, um, uh, the journal, but that's okay. Um, so uh, this is a, a graduate program where students typically graduate with a degree in two to three and a half years, depending on whether or not they're doing a single or a dual degree, and I'm a student in the uh, MLIS program. So um, as, uh, as you could possibly guess, um, the C Also Journal began life in what, um, has come, what I've come to learn is a very typical creation story, which is a group of students or a student decide that they'd like to learn about uh, scholarly publishing or they want to have a journal. So they start one. They gather all their friends. There's lots of enthusiasm at the beginning. They, have a, they publish a journal that is, has lots of content. People are excited and happy um, about, and proud of their achievement, achievement, and then they graduate and they sort of bestow the journal on the next person, on a person that they, they find that they convince to take it over. And that hapless person um, <laughs> is left with um, some documentation sometimes. The OJS is very helpful in providing that documentation, but you have to learn it. There's a very steep learning curve. So they're left with, um, uh, as you know, learning OJS, learning peer review, recruiting a team, uh, uh, discovering that their team needs, members of their team need different types of education and professional development, um, convincing students who don't really want to show other people their work uh, to submit their work, and then trying to convince people to do peer reviews that are actually helpful and kind. Mm -hmm. So um, it is, it seems typical that student journals, I think many of you who are in the libraries understand that some, many student journals will peter out after the second or third year. Um, and I'm the third editor in the third year, and I could be the journal killer. <laughs> um, so I inherited, um, uh, uh, I inherited this journal, um, but I also inherited from the outgoing editor a set of um, ideas for developing sustainability. And I'm gonna, I put some of those into action and I added a few more other ideas. So um, some of the ideas include an editor's toolkit that includes recommended timelines for recruiting, promotion materials, um, who, um, job descriptions, short guides or cheat sheets that help uh, specific members of the editorial team do their jobs. But what I'm gonna focus on for the next couple of minutes is a really valuable thing that I inherited and then and sort of grew, had to foster a bit, and probably need to foster more. Um, I got an advisory committee. I think there are three people on it, and uh, one of them forgot that they were on it. <laughs> so um, in the time that I had, I, I uh, recruited a few more people, so it's now a five-person group. And I promised them that they would never have to come to a meeting with each other. So um, the team includes two members of the teaching faculty, one from libraries, one from archives, a UBC liaison uh, librarian, and the, the student services coordinator for, for the school, and uh, Kevin from the PKP team. Is that actually five or is that six? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so having a committee really helps with sustainability because it, uh, provides, it, it provides skills, credibility, um, and um, improves the, the institutional memory because it resides with those people even though they don't have to attend meetings. So um, professional development was a really key reason why students took on a role with the journal. So I was able to offer an institute, uh, offer two workshops, one with Kevin, um, and these were open to everybody who was in the school. They didn't have to commit to the journal at all. Um, but one of the workshops was with Kevin um, to learn about using the OJS. Um, and a second workshop was with um, uh, the um, archives um, 
faculty member, who also happens to be the editor of Archivaria. So Jennifer Douglas uh, conducted a peer review workshop, and she's committed to do another one um, for the next editor, for the next journal in the, in, that's already scheduled. So, and of course, I'll be booking Kevin again for next year. Um, to help out the next editor. So one of the things that I did fail to secure was someone to help uh, lead a workshop on copy editing. Um, so if you have any leads, please come see me and send them my way. I want to pass that along to the next editor. Um, and then, um, oh, okay. I don't know, if you're up here, you're going to see this sign that says, please stop, you've used up all your time. <laughs> so I will. <laughs> But I think I'll just wrap up here by saying thank you to the PKP community for creating this tool and also for the effort to build a community. Um, one of the things that I, I did do was I made the editorial team come to meetings. And that was really important to have that face-to-face -face time with each other to do some problem solving and uh, also do a little bit of venting with each other. Um, but uh, I think the, build, the community really does help support the independence and, and access to scholarly work. Um, and gives a students an entry point into, into that world. So thank you, everyone. Oh.